morning everyone welcome back to my channel handing the shame back this channel is dedicated a hundred percent to survivors of child sexual abuse why because we need a voice guys and we need to feel that we are not alone so i've got your back my name's gloria masters before i introduce our fabulous guest today I just want to put a little note, a little gentle trigger warning out for you all. Um, if at any point watching this, you start to feel triggered or really uncomfortable, please do yourself the courtesy of switching off and just going to the show notes below where you will be directed for some help and resource. So in the meantime, guess who I've got on the show for you today? Um, her official name is Dr. Katerina Rosenblatt. She's commonly known as Dr. Cat. I'm going to call her Cat, and she is da -da -da, clearly a survivor, otherwise she wouldn't be here, an author, a public speaker, and an international survivor leader of human trafficking and abuse. So all the way from Miami in Florida. Welcome to you, Kat. Thank you, Gloria. It's a pleasure to be here with you and your listeners. Oh, thank you. Hey, so Kat, what, uh, what a world we are living in. Uh, so fabulous to have connected with you on LinkedIn and see the wonderful work you're doing there. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to have our, our beautiful audience, survivor audience out there watching and listening, understand a little about what you're doing um, in the, you know, public speaking, author, um, survivor leader, trafficking space. Where would you like to start? Awesome. Well, you know, I did uh, write a book. It's entitled Stolen, The True Story of a Sex Trafficking Survivor. So for those who would like to learn more about the issue of human trafficking or my story, they can get that either on our website, www.thereishopeforme.org, um, and the proceeds go to help survivors, or they can go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, anywhere else books are sold, it's made available. So that's one thing, <laughs> yes. And then I also have another book called Trafficking in America, which was my dissertation. And I'm working on my third book now, which is to first responders. So this is an exciting time of my life. I feel like I'm officially becoming an author, even though I have been one for several years. You know, sometimes it <laughs> takes a couple to really sink in. <laughs> That's so amazing. And, you know, just having even, I think I may have even read your first book, Stolen. It does come to mind. So I, um, I'm thinking that, you know, for people who pick up the book and all these books and start reading, there will be some wonderful pearls of wisdom, I have no doubt. Um, so for you, when you, which, um, which book would you like to um, discuss at the moment? Which one's appealing? Well, I think since your audience is uh, two survivors and primarily, and we are both survivors, you know, of childhood sexual abuse, which first of all, I have to say uh, is what I would normally characterize human trafficking of children is I considered sex trafficking when I was a child, as being child sexual abuse, paid child sexual abuse. I wasn't paid, but somebody got paid. Yes. And so all I got was abuse. Yes. And so I think the book Stolen is going to be the best, uh, best one for today's episode. But, you know, I love that you center your podcast around survivors because my nonprofit, There Is Hope For Me, is all about from survivors of trafficking to survivors and uh, of trafficking and, and abuse. So it's it's a wonderful space, I feel, uh, when we're working with survivors, when we are sharing our stories. Um, 
and sorry about that. Um, so in terms of uh, survivors to survivors, I believe we bring healing to each other. Absolutely, Kat. And what I what I love about what you're saying is that it doesn't even have to be someone like your talented self. It could be someone we know who is a survivor um, who's packing shelves in the supermarket. There might just be something that they say that helps support us or carry us through or just resonate so strongly uh we we can just learn and grow so much from others absolutely mm. absolutely yeah. and everybody's story is meaningful and everybody's voice counts so you're absolutely right you don't have to be a public speaker or author for your voice to matter your voice matters automatically. And so I'm very thankful uh, that God has given us this space now where survivor voices are heard and lifted up. Um, there is a, an organization in the U.S. called the Office of Victims of Crime out of D.C. And we are getting ready to celebrate 20 years since the Trafficking Victims Protection Act. And they asked us to put our uh, survivor stories in a video um, to commemorate the 20 years. Um, those of us who were part of uh, doing some work there. And I feel like that is very meaningful because 20 years ago, there was, or when I was trafficked 30 years ago, there wasn't even a definition of human trafficking. And uh, the only person that was indicted was one man who was charged with child abuse um, of a friend so of child sexual abuse and so uh, or impregnating a minor but I feel like um, we have come so far so so far in the survivor movement and that's survivors of all kinds of abuse that we do need to raise our voices and we do deserve to have a space for our voices to be heard. And so I encourage all survivors everywhere to lift up their voice in unison against abuse, against trafficking, and stop the violence uh, against women and, and child abuse. It definitely starts within the home and where we first learned to stay quiet. And so I think being a good example is the beginning place. And then, um, sharing our voices to put an end to that in legislation and in groups in podcasts you know so i celebrate you too for what you're doing thank you kate and look you've you've uh raised some really useful points so i'd like to do a little bit of a deeper dive if if okay um when you talk about survivors raising their voices i absolutely love it and I just want to put a little um, clause in there, guys, as for our lovely audience. If you don't yet have the confidence to speak out or reach out, 100% fine. When the time is right, you will, and you'll know that. But I think what Dr. Cat, or Cat as we call her, is, um, is suggesting is even just standing up against and mm -hmm. letting your voice be heard about this type of crime. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to blurt out your story if you're not feeling ready. It just means you can be one of uh, billions across the world who are starting to say no more. Let's uh, protect our children. Uh, Absolutely. Mm. And that's actually, you know, one of the reasons, I, I'm glad you said that, Gloria, because that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about. You know, normally when I go on a podcast, I do share my story of human trafficking and abuse and how it all started. But I recently experienced another um, form of exploitation. And without going into all of it, it was extremely triggering for me 
to have that experience and then share my story. I had a speaking engagement right after, which was liberating in a sense because I took away the power that the traffickers had over me in sharing the story of what happened in Texas. And um, because I had become a victim once again of human trafficking, but this time I wasn't going to allow them to have the control. And I am working with federal authorities to make sure that that trafficker is arrested and even prosecuted because I've been working to help survivors for so many years, over a decade in their own trafficking cases. And now that I know what I know and I know how strong I am and that I won't back down, I am not going to back down no. and I'm going to see it all the way through. Well, I applaud you and thank you for sharing that. And I think it's really powerful. Sometimes people can look at, um, you know, uh, someone like you or someone like me, Kat, and think, gosh, they've got it all together. And I think it's really powerful for you to share um, and for our audience to see that actually look, Guys, we still get triggered. We still have flashbacks. Mm. We still have dissociation occur, uh, you know, as a ro result of all of that. So, yeah. so Kat, I'm really grateful to you for sharing that. The other thing I, I think too is, um, you know, as, as you're talking, there's this awful thing that that can happen in survivor land or in among human beings and it's called this comparative suffering and it's mm. this is not a competition team uh as Kat said earlier your story is just as valid and important mm -hmm. as Kat's as mine as anyone else you know or, or read about so I think it's so strongly powerful and we stand right beside you and what whatever you have suffered you know you are seen you are believed and uh Amen. that is so good yes to your audience that's listening you know and to the survivors out there just imagine we are locking arms with you right now and we are all in this together and know that somebody somewhere is going through what you have gone through or has gone through what you have gone through. So you're not alone because that's exactly what the abusers want us to think is that we're alone in this suffering, that nobody will help us. Nobody will come rescue us. Uh, no one will speak on our behalf, but you know what? We no longer need to believe those lies. We are strong and united. We're stronger yet. You know you have the power within you to stand up against evil and not to allow those old tapes and old memories to replay in your mind and control your life. As soon as this last experience happened in Texas, right away, um, I went into a space, you know, this is only a week and a half ago, my friend. So that's why, I, you know, I'm not... Right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, but I'm grateful because there were other girls that went missing and we're going to help find them. Okay, so I believe that God brings us into places um, that he knows we can handle. He knew I would be strong enough. Um, I experienced some injuries, but you know what? I got out alive. I escaped. And then only later to find out this, uh, uh, situation this vacation rental was not that it was it was a nightmare um, this place it was terrible and the working conditions the the people on the farm on the ranch were just in the hot sun and, and so much mistreatment but I don't want to go into that again and thank you for honoring my my need to have space from that but the reason I brought it up is that it's so important to honor yourself in your story. If you want to share your story, share your story. Like Gloria said, if you want to refrain from sharing your story and just 
be an advocate, it's not just, but it's important too. If you want to encourage others, if you want to live a normal life completely apart from anything that has to do with trafficking or abuse or childhood sexual abuse, by all means, you are more than welcome to do that. Because I know there's times that I have felt like I just want to be normal, <laughs> meaning <laughs> not have all these memories and all, and all these feelings and have, have this, uh, you know, um, I don't want to complain about my calling because I do see it as an honor. Everywhere I go, there is somebody who needs to hear or needs help or needs to be rescued out of trafficking or assistance getting out of their situation. Many times they've, they've already gotten out. Um, they just, you know, needed a little guidance to go to the next step. Yeah. And so we do life coaching and uh, we do like a social work type program where we help plug them into everything that they need for their life. But we work with many providers, you know, um, who are licensed counselors, mental health counselors or social workers or, you know, other, other programs, universities and colleges. But what I'm trying to say is everybody's part is important that they want to play. But I will tell you this, that there is something special about survivors, you know, survivors of childhood sexual abuse. In, in our nonprofit, we only take survivors, and that is uh, as volunteers, survivors of childhood sexual abuse, domestic violence, or human trafficking, because those individuals will understand what our survivors of human trafficking have gone through. It doesn't matter that you haven't gone through, for example, you haven't gone through human trafficking, Gloria. The fact that you've been abused as a child sexually, you understand the nuances that abuse survivors will feel. And trafficking survivors, we work the majority with minors who have been trafficked. These are children yeah. who are being abused. Yeah, no, I have been trafficked. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll send you oh, the I book. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I would love to read it. Yeah. What Look, is it called? Oh, <laughs> On Angel's Wings, My Flight from Trauma to Grace. It's in all versions, um, audio, which just about broke my heart. Talk about triggering. Uh, Audible, Kindle, and paperback. But look, we're not here to talk about me. Uh, I guess what I just want to bring back to your lovely point you know survivors and gosh it's such an honor to speak to you Kat because our beautiful audience out there who are watching and listening you guys matter so much and you know what Kat's really you know I'm just kind of confirming what she's saying which is what you bring in terms of understanding and supporting and just um, having the absolute core belief of any other survivor out there, uh, you know, in terms of them finding the courage to speak or, or advocate for is so powerful. And in fact, I'd even take it a step further. I love survivors. You're not going to meet a more honest group are you because look at the courage it takes Kat for us to find our voices mm -hmm. look at the courage and I applaud you yes I applaud you for writing the book and I'm sorry I do I I do want your voice and your book lifted up as well because I feel like when one of us rises we all rise yeah. and honestly there are more survivors out there who are yet to become survivor leaders like you and I, you know, to the point of writing a book that they need these, this literature. This is like food for them, for their soul, because there are not enough survivor books out there. They need to read our stories. They need to hear our stories. I'm glad you mentioned that. My book is also available on audio and Kindle. And I think it's important, you know, for survivors to get this material one way or another, reading it, hearing it, 
you know, um, watching a podcast interview because we are encouraging them that you don't have to stay stuck in this. If there was hope for me and if there was hope for you, there is hope for everyone. Absolutely. And, you know, hope is the last thing to go, guys. So hang in there. And even if it's not feeling close to you at the moment, all you have to do is look out the window and notice something in nature because, man, that's powerful. There's some beautiful things yeah. out there. Uh, and, and we're very grateful. I, I'm, I can't speak for Kat, but I imagine as well, very grateful to have made it through and to be alive and to be able to do this work. It's a real honor. I actually had a conversation. Uh, some of the audience may know Mark Atwood. He does um, quite a lot in this space to support survivors over in Ireland. And um, mm. he and I were messaging last night and he said to me, you keep, you keep doing this work, Gloria. But sometimes, I don't know about you, Kat, but sometimes I don't know if I'm worthy enough. I just feel like, oh, what, what if I haven't uh, got it right? You know, sometimes it can be a big load. Well, we all, I think, as survivors, struggle with that feeling of worthiness. So you're mm. not alone. Mm. It's, it's a constant, you know, even when I shared, I gave this talk um, for the FBI on Monday, and I was just like, I, I didn't feel like I was my best, you know, and I do this all the time, this public speaking, but because of this recent trauma, um, I didn't feel like I gave my best. And I felt a lot of shame for sharing because it's like, here, you're supposed to be a professional, but how did this happen to you? You know, but that's what I was saying that even after something traumatic, what I did first when I got home, I didn't go into human trafficking stuff. I went into the general public, started doing um, regular errands and making the most of every single day. Everybody I met with, I, I just said, hello. I said, it's, it's so nice to meet you. I made their day. I made a point of being positive because you can so easily stay stuck in the shame of another situation, of, of some other exploitation or abuse. And this world is full of exploiters and abusers of every kind. You know, I had been raped when I was um, uh, in 2020, right before this, uh, the Super Bowl here in Miami, by somebody I knew and I trusted in law enforcement. And he took me on a date and it was date rape. It was. And it was like, how, how do I wrap my head around that? You know what? There's always going to be something. I mean, thank God the FBI sent me to uh, a rape crisis treatment center. So I did get counseling for eight months for that because uh, this person was the head of our task force at, uh, at one point in time. So it was devastating for me to think that how could this person have treated me like a piece of meat and um yeah and he even knew it because he 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 wasn't going to take no for an answer I said no no I've been celibate for 12 years but um I'll say this that I have forgiven that person I've forgiven um I would say the majority of the people who abused me and mistreated me in my life but I am not going to stay down I'm not. And that is the best victory is to keep rising up, keep being positive, keep being, bringing inspiration to others. And you know what? I may have experienced another form of human trafficking, but I was not going to allow it to, to keep me down. No way. And the shame that I felt even after the talk, I left that experience and said, you know, I'm going to go treat myself to a nice dinner and a nice glass of wine, and I'm going to just get over this feeling because if I stay stuck in this, um, that's not going to be healthy for anyone. I have to live in this space, this body, this mind. So, God, what can I do? You know, I'm praying, 
and talking to my counselors and, you know, just honestly, the thing that helped me the most was helping other survivors. Right away, there were new survivors that were brought into our program that I could help. And she had to face her trafficker face to face in court. And I was there with her. And it was like, this is what I'm made for. I'm made to, to help others. And it got me out of my own head. And it got me out of my own guilt and shame thinking. So that's what I love to do is to advocate for others and help others, other survivors. Well, you know, uh, just head off to you. There's so many things I'm feeling for you at the moment, Kat, and uh, just a big hug through the screen. Um, thank you so much for your truth telling around this. You know, unfortunately, well, there's several things. There's predators out there who are meant to be advocating or helping or supporting survivors. And, um, and unfortunately, some of them will just exploit and use. The second thing is that when that happened, and you know, gosh, we know, don't we, that uh, that uh, a, a recent trauma has this horrible little quality about it, and that is simply this: it immediately emerges all of the other traumas of a similar nature. So we can end up being taken straight back to the initial trauma and feel the bigness of it all over again. So I'm so pleased that you could go to the Rape Crisis Centre and get some support there. Mm -hmm. um, that's huge. And you know you've mentioned shame, and we know that this channel is called Handing the Shame Back because, Kat, every time you're speaking, you're releasing more of that and you're not staying trapped it, by the prison uh, that, you know, abusers had you in and had us in. And I think, team out there, one of the things that's interesting and, and it may be helpful, and I appreciate Kat's point on this, please, is we, when this all began for us as children, what happened was we were put into a little prison uh, because we couldn't feel the same as others. We couldn't feel like others because what was happening was not normal or acceptable or could be spoken of. Fast track to today, and for some of us, we're still kept in that little prison. And we're not aware that we're keeping ourselves in there, but we are sometimes because we don't yet have the confidence or courage to speak out. So here's a little tip. You don't have to speak out publicly. You can find other ways through art, through yoga, yeah. through poetry, through um, writing it out in a journal. You can do all that to start to uh, find the key to escape what's your thinking mm. Kat on that I love that and those are all wonderful self-care uh ways of uh healing from trauma so everything that you've mentioned you know I do recommend that to survivors as well as meditation you know and prayer and um breathing you know, there's certain breathing techniques that really ground you, you know. Um, I think one is called pranayama breathing. And I, I share these because they're techniques that I use with survivors. For example, the young lady in the court the other day, we were doing the deep breathing while she was preparing to meet her trafficker. And she was so relaxed. And we did the meditation and we did prayer, you know, to um, who she believed in. She believed in God and as, I, as do I in Jesus Christ. So we shared that same faith and we could pray to him. And But many of these that you talked about journaling can be healing. Um, it can be healing to go kayaking or to be in nature. I think you mentioned that one. That one 
is so profound because when you when you are at one, for example, um, in nature alone, you know, even just uh, walking on the grass barefoot, when your feet touch the earth, the earth absorbs your trauma. I've heard. Wow. I learned this. Yeah. I learned this um, in my courses of study that it is so healing for your soul. It may not absorb it all right away, but it is very healing when you go and you do just some nature walking, you know, in a safe place or a safe park and you touch the ground barefoot and walk around, um, maybe do some deep breathing or some prayer exercise or yoga and you will find a release of a little bit of your trauma every time. It's so healing. So I recommend it for everyone. Well, that's real. Wow, that's a real nugget. Thank you. I think mm -hmm. audience, aren't we lucky? Look at what le we're learning today. <laughs> um, fantastic. Gosh, yeah. it absorbs it. And how beautiful and how right in a way that it can be mm -hmm. released from us, Kat, um, mm -hmm. through our body and through our feet. Wow. And also through animals, you know, pets, especially cats, have like a healing. Um, when they're on your chest and they're purring, they're actually healing you. So the uh, service pets are so important. Wow. Um, you know, I had the um, the fortune of, of having a conversation with Tara Reid. She was the whistleblower for the Joe Biden uh, sexual exploitation that occurred there. And uh, she interviewed me a while ago, and she was sharing with us uh, around the the power and the healing of the horses and the have yeah. you heard of that the, the oh yeah the horses and the trauma um mm. you know the kids that are traumatized that get to go out to the ranch and and mm -hmm. ride horses equine therapy equine is called. that what it's called equine therapy wow and actually yeah, that, that is very powerful because horses are very in tune to trauma, you know, they're compassionate animals. And actually that's what this trafficker used when I experienced it in Texas not too long ago, that I would be experiencing equine therapy and animal therapy, but it was not that. So even though you've been abused or you've been exploited, you know, for anybody who's listening, you still have to maintain your boundaries. You still have to maintain your guard up. And even I had friends that were standing beside me and actually those friends helped me, helped get me out of that in a way because they were my um, person to talk to hey, this is going on. This doesn't seem right. This is, and for me, thankfully, it only lasted five days, you know, and I eventually got the strength to get myself out. I do rely on my faith in God and believe that he gave me the strength and the courage to run away and escape this, this terrible place when I started seeing how horrible it really was um, and the ritualistic uh, abuse of animals and things that were going on. It was just her, horrible so it was not therapy and that's what exploiters are they they turn the tables on you you know making you think it's a, a friendship it's a relationship it's an experience it's something healing I was paying for this to be there and then they were trying to trap me into um you know a labor trafficking situation to work with the animals and having a heart of volunteering, I didn't mind being with the animals, but then she tripled the rent and tried to create this situation where I was in debt bondage, but I already knew what that was because I work in anti-trafficking. So 
all of this, I had three friends um, in my Rotary group actually um, that deal with anti-trafficking and they, they were so powerful to talk to and just uh, kind of check in and say, hey, this isn't, this doesn't seem right. And, you know, I'm, I experienced this um, for a reason, like I said, because the, the trafficker would then get girls in and rape, have them, sorry, I don't want to say anything triggering, but it was, you know, further down the line, you know, um, more terrible things would happen. So I was fortunate to get out. But that also says the importance of support, support from other survivors, support from other people, you know, and I did have the support of other survivors, um, leaders, friends that, that I consider in the movement and, um, and work with, as well as um, other people who are advocates, you know, who do this work. Um, and I think, if you don't have any kind of support, you may not have family support. I was in a state that I wasn't familiar with. I didn't have the family support. Um, so you're not familiar with the area. You're not familiar with the rents. The economy has gone up. And so these exploiters take advantage of that. And imagine even much more if you're without, you know, undocumented, you don't have papers, you don't have a transportation, you don't have a, um, you know, a car to get away like I did or a credit card where you can go rent a hotel room and get a, on a flight back to back home, you know? Uh, so that was how that ended, but you just cannot put your guard down. You find your tribe, just like you said uh, before we started, you find your tribe, that's your support and always check in with them. And even if you fail and uh, fall down, sorry, I shouldn't say fail because being trafficked is not a failure. Uh, it is a failure on the part of the trafficker. It is not our shame to carry. But even if you feel like you fall down or you um, maybe take a step back or you don't, uh, you need a breather, you know, it's okay. It's okay to come back to the space when you're ready. It's okay to come back to, um, to doing what you feel comfortable doing, but there is a time that you need to take care of yourself. And I hope some of those tips that we talked about were great self-help tools for others. Oh, look, I and I, I know they will be, and we've got a, a beautiful survivors out there who will be watching and furiously writing. <laughs> so thank you, Kat. Um, just thinking about your public speaking, um, so obviously you you speak to certain groups. Do you uh, so delighted you get to speak to the FBI? Um, do you what other kind of groups are you um, sharing this to and with? Well, I'm looking forward to uh, two school outreaches that I'm going to be speaking to public school students because that is one of the areas that I really enjoy is public speaking to students. Yes. Um, I get so much appreciation from the kids. I get no pushback from the schools or administrators or parents. I get notes of thank you, many of which I put on my website because these kids deserve a fighting chance. And when we give them this awareness and these tools, we're helping them and they see it, they realize it, they know it because it's on TikTok, there's videos about trafficking, you know, it's on the social media platform, but they don't know exactly what to look for or yes. well, how does it really happen? Yeah. So when I go, get to go in there and I develop tools to help children identify if they have been trafficked and then we help them come out of that you know and work with law enforcement with the fbi and um and homeland security and help them get the the safety that they need because many times the traffickers are waiting for them right outside of school and this has happened in real life and if we wouldn't have had the talk and had the privilege of talking to them they would have gone and been trafficked 
um, or continue being trafficked. So there have been so many opportunities to help kids in the schools. And that's where I love speaking. One of, one of the most places I love speaking. The other place is um, in uh, universities. I love educating. Yes. I love educating. Yes. And, um, you know, places of faith, places of worship are wonderful too. They're very loving. Um, other nonprofits, anti trafficking nonprofits, they can be very supportive um, and very survivor centered and sensitive. And so I appreciate that. And uh, I think pretty much anyone who's willing to learn, you know, who's willing to take care of a survivor when when they have the opportunity um, to learn from a survivor and not exploit a survivor, not abuse us, not tokenize us, but actually treat us with dignity and respect when we are speaking and are sharing our stories, it's so important to be treated with that respect. And uh, I really value those partners that do that. Yeah, and I I love what you're saying because I also want to add in there um, that... Uh, <sighs> The courage it takes a survivor to speak, I liken it to um, leaping off a tall cliff without a parachute for the non-survivors out there. That's how big it is for survivors to speak. So I actually think um, if, if a survivor has spoken, you're in the presence of greatness, actually, and you need to feel very very humbled by that because they chose you or they trusted you wow that's that's huge so, yes and to, yeah. and thank you for saying that it is like jumping off a cliff sometimes because you don't know the reaction that you're going to get so normally i would have bullet points before i speak about what what are safe topics to speak on and for survivors out there who are looking to start doing public speaking, um, I encourage them, I would encourage them to um, maybe listen to some podcasts like yours, you know, and others. I just did one in Australia. Um, I think listen to how survivors share their stories and listen to how um we also take care of ourselves. And it's okay to say, hey, I need a break. Even when I gave this talk on Monday, I said, I'm sorry, I was recently traumatized. So I'm not sure how this is going to come out, but <laughs> you know, it's so you're beautiful. Here for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm very authentic and very real with everybody, with survivors, with, you know, with everyone that I come in contact with. I do train law enforcement too on investigative techniques and I'm very honest very raw because I feel like that's the only way you really get it is if you're honest about it and you're sincere and people can tell when you when you are and it hits home it hits the heart I think for a lot of people um in anti-trafficking and this is something I don't know if you want to touch on because it can be a touchy subject um but I'd love to hear your perspective you know now that I know you're a survivor of trafficking as well, um, there are many people in this movement who are not in it for the right reason. And they can trigger and re-traumatize -tra survivors so much. I've seen it left and right. I've experienced it. I even experienced it at this event. Um, not, not the FBI. They're great. They're survivor-centered. But there was a lady who had never... Uh, done any work in this space and she came up to me immediately after uh, making comments because she was very jealous and I thought how what? petty <laughs> sorry cut you off no you're right and I'd love to hear what you think about the non-survivors in the movement yeah. and have you ever experienced anything yeah. in that regard unfortunately I don't know why this is, but it almost seems there's a bit of voyeurism out there. And for our beautiful audience watching, be wary of the ones that just want to ask 
gratuitous questions or questions because they want to feel so interested as almost to be entertained. So you'll know it mm. and you know how you know it, team, you know it because instinctively you recoil. And so I, I do get a bit of that and I actually sometimes being interviewed, someone will want to spend 10 minutes asking the most personal voyeuristic questions which are not designed to support the cause to be honest Kat I never need to speak about my story I'll happily do it anytime if it brings attention to this platform handing the shame back that's the only reason I don't need to otherwise but my mm -hmm. point is I can smell a rat a mile off and if someone starts to just want to interrogate me about, you know, for instance, satanic ritual abuse and, and what I went through there. My question is, there was only one part of it, and why do you want to know? Like, it's quite exploited. Ex what's the word? Exploitive? Exploited? Anyway. Um, and, yes, yeah. and then there are, uh, there are people who are not like you and I and our beautiful audience who are not trauma-informed at all, mm. have no desire to be, and just want, we just clickbait. How many hits can we get by, you know, um, using those words or getting that sort of... Mm. You know. So, yeah, I, I don't always feel that safe out there. I, I want to genuinely do my best with humility and love for our survivor tribe uh, because there's up to one in three of us in this country and I believe globally. So we, we really have to try and support survivors and do it with integrity. And uh, for anyone watching neither Kat or I are interested in speaking to you if you just want to um, be voyeuristic or or not be respectful. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I do have to say, you know, you mentioned one in three are uh, uh, up to one in survivors. three. Yeah. Yeah. And I found um, doing outreach in the schools that one in three middle schoolers are being recruited for sex trafficking and one in nine high schoolers actively recruited online through social media and peer-to-peer -peer recruitment. It's becoming so commonplace that we really need to have a course taught to children as part of the curriculum of what is human trafficking. I think you're absolutely right. And I, I don't know if um, this is just one one report I've heard, although I've heard it a few times now, Kat, um, CSA, child sexual abuse and trafficking of this uh, is a trillion, trillion dollar industry. It is the biggest money-making industry globally. So I'm not surprised the numbers are what they are. And, you know, we've just got to keep eyes open and wonder, uh, because it's not just the grooming of the children, unfortunately, there are families and parents who are being groomed, and they don't even know it. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. I believe yeah. that. My yeah. mom was groomed yeah. by the trafficker, yes. single parent moms, you know, um, Mary, my first trafficker would bring me back when my mom said, and um I think you're right, though, about the voyeurism. You re we really, as survivors, have to be careful in sharing our stories that it's not become a t titillating um, topic because we want to bring awareness to the populations that need it. So I feel like it's more needed in the schools where the children are. It's more needed where survivors are, you know, in juvenile facilities or universities, and I feel like um, even youth groups and churches, but not all of them want to hear 
but the kids want to hear and they need to know. They deserve to know. They well, deserve they, the, the they're right the ones that are going to be Im impacted, aren't they? You know, yeah. they, so they do need to know this. The, I'd love to see this as part of a, a curriculum, actually. Uh, that's how mm -hmm. important it is. Um, Absolutely. You know, take I away. I would love to help. <laughs> yeah, take away geometry, cat. Let's get some of these life skills in there. Um, <laughs> can I say that is my soapbox? I have never once used algebra in my life. <laughs> But I <laughs> that's what calculators are for. <laughs> <laughs> and I love math. I'm not knocking math, but algebra, you know what? That at 13 years learning algebra, I should have learned a life skill, like you put it, of how to spot, identify, and avoid traffickers. Because by ninth grade, I might not be there. That's the one. It's not even, and it, and it's not just that. I, I'm talking a bit about the whole child sexual abuse education um, because yep. little ones don't know. And uh, I think in New Zealand, I'm very proud of our New Zealand police. They have a Keeping Safe program. They go into schools. It's not just about uh, sexual abuse or potential groomers or traffickers. It's actually about other ways of keeping safe as well. But uh, they do have a graduated program component in there on this, which I think is fantastic. And they get the young, trendy, gorgeous male and female constables doing it. They're not in uniform. So, you know, that the kids feel more part of. So well, well done, New Zealand Police, on that. Hey, um, mm -hmm. as, as we come to close out, um, Kat, I'm just wondering, do you, is there any, anything else you would recommend for our survivors, you know, that, that helped you in your recovery and healing from this? Is there any other modalities or any other ideas you would like to share that uh, may just help our audience? Well, I'd like to share my faith, if that's okay. Absolutely. Thank you. I would just like to present the opportunity for you to, uh, anybody listening, uh, to receive this gift that I received at a Billy Graham crusade before I was ever trafficked, because I believe that is what helped save me out of trafficking. And it is the gift of salvation. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And so this is not meant to shame anyone who doesn't believe or who has experienced spiritual abuse, because I recognize that that is a real thing. And I have been a victim of spiritual abuse, but God has never spiritually abused me and he does not abuse and he does not turn a blind eye to abuse. He is always on the side of the oppressed and the oppressor. A beautiful audience. What an honor to be with you again today. And haven't we been fortunate having the lovely Dr. Kat with us? Um, there's many, many takeaways from this, guys. So with love and light, please know I see you. I stand beside you. And I believe you. Till next time.